Hey there, this is episode 3 of Destination Unknown, a solo travel adventure. Last episode I spent my time in Ireland. From Ireland I flew over to Girona, Spain, and I spent about a month and a half in Spain before moving on to Morocco, so my time in Spain is going to span over two episodes. If you've made it this far, I really appreciate you, hopefully you're enjoying these stories and learning a bit more about me. Now, as soon as I was taking a bus into Girona, I knew that I was gonna love Spain. There was a lot of good street art, the architecture is amazing as well, and the colors of Spain. Plus, the only other language I speak besides English is a little bit of Spanish, and I would get to practice my Spanish as I traveled through Spain. The first people I met in Girona were a couple Argentinians, a guy from Iran, and also a guy from Mallorca. The person I really connected to out of these people was Lola who was playing the uke and singing some Amy Winehouse songs. Lola's from Argentina, and I spent some time with her over the next few days, where we really had some deep talks, which helped me out a lot. At this point in my travels, I really needed some new shoes. Some casual shoes, as well as parkour shoes. So every morning, I would Google some shops around and try to look for any shoes. Of course, the prices were outrageous, as shoes always are, and so I never felt like buying anything. But on one of these mornings, I accidentally ran into a little market. This was an outside market where vendors sold whatever they had, and I was so happy to be there. I walked all around the market twice, talking to vendors about prices and what they were selling. It was great to run into the market because I needed to get some cheap food, I also needed some new socks, and I needed to buy a hat. And I found all those things there for about 11 euro. Plus, it's amazing practice for your speaking skills with another language if you're in a market setting because it's basic conversation things such as how are you, asking the price of certain things, and negotiating skills. A funny thing I found at these markets was that almost every single vendor was selling ladies underwear or pantyhose, and some shops were specifically just that. So everywhere you walked around there was women looking through big piles of underwear for the perfect pair. I guess women in Girona have an underwear collection, I don't know. There's this really pretty wall that I went to in Girona. It's one of the main attractions. It protects part of the city, or at least it did in the past, from intruders. And you can walk all along it. I walked along it a couple times while I was in Girona. The first time I walked along it, I made it to one of the guard towers, and I had this really strange experience of deja vu. After really thinking about the experience, I realized that I had dreamed of the exact experience earlier in the week. And this really tripped me out that I had dreamed about a future experience I was going to have. But I love those kind of things. They're super special experiences. I met this guy Nick one night and we decided to go walk the Girona wall uh, while it was closed. He was American as well and we were both tripping out a little bit. We had to find a sneaky way in climbing a wall. But once you actually get on there, there's no security and there was actually a lot of people walking it. It's funny because as an American, you have this idea that any special attraction is gonna have tons of cameras watching and tons of security to prevent any mischief, you might say. I found that in Spain, there really wasn't much of that. America is all about lawsuits. But not so much in other countries. From Girona, I took a bus to Figueres. I stopped in between the cities to take a two and a half hour hike that I had been recommended by somebody at the hostel. I had my whole bag with me, which is about 50 pounds, so it was a hard hike. At some point during the hike, I just felt overwhelmed with emotion, and I looked over the view, and I cried a little bit, and I thought about how I had wanted to do this trip, and then I just got up and did it. And I was really proud of myself that I was actually traveling. I was doing the thing. You know, the whole Europe solo travel. I checked into my hostel in Figueres and about three minutes later Lola walked in and checked in as well. The timing was hilarious. Lola and I went over to the Salvador Dali Museum. I cannot recommend this museum enough. It's amazing. The museum is a super trippy property that's full of Dali paintings, sketches, and sculptures. 
Lola and I walked around for about three hours looking at everything, really appreciating the art. I can't wait to go back there someday. We also walked over to a giant castle nearby on the top of a hill where you could overlook the city. The castle was closed, but just like the Girona wall, you could kind of just walk in and look around. There was barely any security. So Lola and I ran around exploring and then we sat on the top of the castle and looked over the city and had some really deep conversations. The day after this, I actually found two pairs of reasonable shoes in a shop. I also had a few clothes that I didn't need anymore, mainly long sleeve stuff, so I was looking for a clothes donation shop. I couldn't seem to find it, even though I saw it on Google Maps. I walked past the same spot a couple times, and I finally found it and realized it was closed. Some guys on a bench nearby offered me some weed. I said no thanks and was walking on my way when one of the guys asked me what I had to donate. He didn't look like he had much. So I gave him a hat, jeans, and a windbreaker. At that point, he felt really grateful and offered me to smoke with him for free. I said, no thank you. When you don't know where you are or how to get to the next place, it's just not a good idea to be in a different mindset. The next town I stayed in was Tosa de Mar. This was a hostel right near the beach, which I love. I would practice a lot of flips at the beach, off of a ledge into the sand, and a mom and son were watching me for a while one of the times. The mom showed me that she had been taking videos and offered to send them to me. I said okay. And then she actually offered me to stay with her and her husband and her son in Norway, where I could teach her son some flips and hang out with them. I got her contact info, and I never ended up staying there because I didn't go anywhere near Norway during my travels. But I thought it was so cool that somebody was open to the idea of me coming to stay with them just because they enjoyed the flips that I was doing and that I was a nice person. Now, I was traveling in Spain during the summer, which phew, really hot in Spain, but the ocean water, perfect temperature. So I could always jump in the ocean and cool off. After Tosa de Mar, I went to Barcelona and I stayed there for quite a few weeks. The first person I met up with there was Harley. You might remember from episode two, Harley's one of my good friends that I met up with in Ireland, and he happened to be traveling in Barcelona at the same time as me. It was the evening time, and we sat on a bench and drank wine, he played guitar, I freestyle rapped and sang harmonies to whatever he was singing, and eventually I turned over an empty trash can and was drumming on it along to his guitar. After all of our fun, we realized that the metro was actually closed and we couldn't get back to where we were staying. So we walked seven miles all the way back to my hostel. We got back at 3 a.m., and that night, I slept well. In the morning, I went to this park by a zoo. I really liked the vibes there. There was tons of people sunbathing, sitting around in the park, people doing silks. And so I trained parkour for a while and it was a good spot to do so. People enjoyed watching and they were taking some videos of me doing flips and whatnot. With the new hostel I was staying with, I hiked up to the bunkers in Barcelona, where you can see the entire city. It's an amazing view, and there's always a ton of people up there. I saw that there was a giant water tower up there, and I decided that I would sleep on top of it at some point during this trip. The night after climbing up to the bunkers, I felt like I just wanted to go to sleep early. But as usual, somebody that I had met convinced me to stay out and start drinking, and of course it ended up being a great time. That's it? Really good. <laughs> a group of six of us or so went out onto the streets to go run around. A French guy that I was with saw that a man was selling flowers and said that him and I should go buy a bunch of flowers and hand them to some Dutch girls that were standing nearby. They thought it was very cute and appreciated it, and we ended up hanging out with them for a while. We also played Truth or Dare, and of course somebody dared me to kiss one of the Dutch girls. And then we ended up hanging out all night, along with her friends. They had a lot of energy, we ran and climbed things, and we had a lot of fun. This night was another example of 
me not pushing myself to be better and be more confident. This Dutch girl was making a lot of hints at me that she wanted to hang out longer and whatever else. But I'm too polite and didn't want to assume that she liked me and so I never made a move. When her and her friends left, I didn't even ask for her number or her Facebook. The next day, I felt really, really shitty. I felt like I had missed an opportunity and she was also somebody that I really liked and had fun with and I didn't have any contact info. I got down on myself. I was like, Roland, you have to take advantage of opportunities. When you meet people, you can't be afraid to ask them for their contact info. I moped around a bunch for that day and maybe a little bit the next day as well. Two days after that, I decided I would sleep on top of the water tower. I had to climb up this two-story chain link fence with my 50-pound backpack on. I climbed all the way up on top. It was nighttime, so only a few people saw me climb up there, but I didn't think that was too much of a problem. There was like 40 or 50 people up around that area though, because that's where people like to go to hang out and party at the bunkers. When I got to the top, I was unrolling my sleeping bag and I looked up and noticed that there was a security camera and it had a green light on it. I squinted my eyes a little bit, thinking, and then I saw the green light turn to red. I knew I was in trouble immediately. So I packed up all my stuff as fast as I could, threw my bag on my back, and started climbing down the chain link fence. I ripped my fingers apart a little bit because I was going too fast and my bag was heavy, but I didn't want to take any chances. As soon as I got down to the ground, floodlights lit up the entire staircase of the water tower as well as the top of it. Along with that, a loud alarm started blaring and everyone around in the area was looking at the water tower wondering what was happening. The few people that saw me climb up it, they definitely knew who set it off. I was just really glad that I wasn't up there still when the alarms went off. That night I had nowhere else to sleep, so I tried to sleep on the bunkers, but there was too many people around making noise. So I walked over to a nearby park and set up my sleeping bag and used my bag as a pillow and slept underneath a bush. This was my first sleeping under a bush experience, but would not be my last. I barely slept, so in the morning I just hiked up back to the bunkers and I recorded the sunrise. Even though I wasn't checked into any hostel anymore, I went back to the one that I had been staying at, and they were really nice and let me shower and brush my teeth and also leave my bag there while I explored a little bit. You find that a lot while traveling. A lot of the hostels are very chill and the managers are nice people who just like travelers and they like helping people out. The lesson there, just like with anything, is just ask and you might receive. If you ask with confidence, people like that too and usually you'll be rewarded. Now my pattern was that I would try to get some good sleep and then I would stay up a couple nights partying because people convinced me to. And then maybe three mornings later, I would have to sleep in. I wouldn't be able to choose so, I would just be sleeping, sleeping, sleeping. So one morning I was supposed to meet this girl, Lea, that I had met in Tosa de Mar. She was from France. I was supposed to meet her at 11 a.m., but I ended up way oversleeping and I had to text her and meet her at 2.30 p.m. instead. And I always felt bad about that kind of stuff. I don't like letting people down. Anyway, we went to the beach in Barcelona together and she challenged me to swim all the way to the marker in the ocean where you're not supposed to swim past. Now it was actually a pretty long swim and we swam it together all the way there touched the little marker, and then swam back. She had no problem doing it. But by the time I got back to the beach, I was winded. My head was spinning, I was seeing stars, and I had to lay down. I felt sick. Once I had done this, I did it a couple more times while I was in Barcelona because I wanted to practice my swimming skills. All this time through Spain, I was working on Spanish language in Duolingo, which is a popular app for learning languages. And I knew that I would be going to Portugal soon, so I started learning Portuguese as well. At least just the basic greetings and words that would be helpful for traveling there. That's where I'm going to end it for now. Thanks for watching episode 3. In the next episode, I'll finish my Spain adventures. And then in episode 5, we'll be going to Morocco, where things got real crazy. We'll see you on the next episode of Destination Unknown.